The big day has finally arrived. The passing out parade of the Pakistan Military Academy. Young cadets seem nervous while checking their uniform details for the umpteenth time. After all, they are the main stars and shortly will be marching out to the ranks of officers from the very training grounds they inhabited for the last two years. The academy adjutant wants all his gentlemen and lady cadets to be at their best as he mounts his elegant gray charger to lead them to the parade square. What makes Pakistan Military Academy stand out in the Committee of Military Academies worldwide is the ideology to agitate a comprehensive being. A fine blend of body and mind after a rigorous training that spans over a period of two years. The outcome thus is not only one of the best human fighting machines in the world, but a cultured personality encapsulating a humane soul and an active mind, stimulating intellect and common sense. And to carve this product, a finest set of master craftsmanship is surely what is required. The ones who hardly err are spotless and perfect as a picture, hence a drill staff. The institution of the drill staff at Pakistan Military Academy dates back to October 1947, the time when the academy was first established with its first battalion called as Qadiyazm's Own. So when Colonel Engel, in his capacity as Academy's first commandant, formally initiated the training of the first batch in January 1948, the drill instructors were very much part of the overall scheme. The fact that the main drill square is also named after the first Pakistani drill sergeant of the Academy, Rafiullah, itself speaks volumes of their integral position at Pakistan Military Academy. No wonder, thus, to be a drill staff is the dream of every junior-ranked soldier. Coming from humble backgrounds and with basic education, this position grooms these raw, non-commissioned officers to become the legendary icons through a painstakingly long and hard process that finally distinguishes them to be the instructors of the future top military command of the motherland. A cutthroat competition is thus witnessed when selections for a drill staff are made. It all begins at the respective units and centers, which nominate their best talent for the prestigious drill staff course to be conducted at the Pakistan Military Academy. Once at Pakistan Military Academy, after initial selections and scrutiny, the most eligible are hurled into the phase of additional trainings and tests. It all culminates into a full board interview as all the four adjutants sit to select the cream. On the basis of these recommendations, the best in the final list are called as and when the requirement arises. Naik Arshad, aged 32, is one such lucky soul who has qualified to be a drill instructor at the academy. Ajav, अब वो पता है ड्रिल स्टाफ या ड्रिल इंस्ट्रक्टर बनने के बाद आप अपने इस शौक को मजीद नहीं कैरी ऑन कर सकोगे सर अगर देखा जाए तो पाकिस्तान आर्मी में उसकी अपनी एक जगह है और ये ड्रिल एज ए ड्रिल इंस्ट्रक्टर इसकी अपनी एक जगह है यहां पे ऑफिसर साहबान को तरबियत दी जाती है यहां पे रहना भी मेरे लिए फर्क बात है अगर मैं यहां से वापस चला जाता तो वहां जाके अपने इस शौक को बरकरार रखता अगर मैं इधर रुक गया हूं तो इंशाल्लाह इधर अभी अपनी जो Excited and thrilled, he seems eager to take on to his job. There are, however, fears and shortcomings on his end too, 
as he reports at Pakistan Military Academy to take up the cherished assignment. Soon he will be interacting with the cadets who hardly share his social, cultural and educational backgrounds. They speak a language he's hardly conversant with, while on the other hand, his diction sounds pretty unfamiliar to the cadets. The way out for Naik Ashad thus will be to remain silent, observe his senior instructor staff Rab Nawaz, equip himself with the needed vocabulary, polish his communication skills, acclimatize with the environ of the academy, and then finally show his muscles when the time's right. It's exactly the same mill staff Rab Nawaz was agitated through and judged by his performance was appointed as the company Havaldar Major or a CHM as commonly known in the academy. The uniform details coupled with his physical appearance are of utmost importance. The brass that he wears is always shining and so are his shoes. The sashes are spotless and the freshly shaved face beams with a crisp pair of mustaches. A normal day in staff Rab Nawaz's life dawns much before the sunrise. It's three in the morning and still pitch dark when staff Rab Nawaz leaves his bed to prepare for his daily chores which begin with the morning prayers. He then dresses up to proceed for the zero period, his first assignment of the day. As cadets emerge from their living accommodation, staff at Abnava scrutinizes their attire, gait and demeanor. Slightest deviation from the set standards is swiftly checked and may invite the cadet's name and numbers entry in staff Rabnavaz's notebook, which would yield into night punishment. The poor cadet's day thus might be ruined at its very beginning. As the gentlemen cadets leave for their dormitories to get themselves ready for their classes, staff Rabnavaz, like other drill staff, rushes for his next assignment, daily roll call of the gentlemen cadets. Soon the gentlemen cadets would be falling in for the attendance call, to the amazed cadets, however, the drill staff is nowhere to be seen. <laughs> is he late? Can he be? <laughs> cadets leave for their respective classes, and staff Rabnavaz, like other drill staffs, escorts them to their respective destinations. At any given time, nevertheless, he may emerge on the Pakistan Military Academy road to keep a vigilant eye on the gentlemen cadets. As the sound of marching drum fills in the background, the four adjutants appear on this historic trail. Gallantly mounting their horses, they add yet another blend of sobriety to the ambiance. The drill staff, as well as the adjutants, assure the decorum remains well maintained a slight deviation on part of the cadets is promptly noticed by their piercing eyes and what follows is a scolding reprimand. These three young cadets got late from their classes and to make up for the delay, they try to take a shortcut. But at Pakistan Military Academy, there's no shortcut to excellence. One has to take the right path. No wonder the gentlemen cadets are checked and caught within no time. It's nevertheless the drill period where staff Rabnavaz is seen at his best. It's his exclusive domain after all. The problem, however, is that his cadets are the fresh inductees, the raw lot that hardly understands what he shouts and with difficulty could match the pace of his drill. The sight beyond doubt is an interesting one. And it's not only the drill that has to be perfected, but the saluting ability of these gentlemen cadets also need perfection. As per rules, they can't leave the premises unless they are able to salute with precision. Catch, however, is that prior to the saluting test, he must know how to dress up to carry out an impressive salute. A dress test thus precedes the saluting test. 
The changing scenarios have also seen a slight addition to drill staff's role in the academy. Now, lady cadets are also being inducted in the Pakistan Military Academy, which calls for new methodology of training that although caters for the gender difference, yet remains as firm and rigorous as needed for a soldier. The senior cadets have to take charge at the quarter guards, where they perform their duties of vigilant vanguards of the academy under the apt guidance of the drill staff. On the other hand, some cadets are on punishment on this weekly off, and repeated bugle calls may await them at any given hour of the day. Conducted and supervised by the drill staff, the trick behind the bugle calls is that no one knows the place and timing of these calls. The cadets on punishment have to locate the place and have to present themselves in prescribed uniforms in less than five minutes. But rest assured, there does exist a humane face of these very stony-faced souls. One would hardly recognize him in civilian attire if bumped accidentally anywhere outside the academy. A rare insight to the staff canteen also reveals a different picture of these machines of a man, where frank sharing of jokes, interesting experiences of the day, and exchange of pleasantries among the fellow comrades is not very uncommon. For the cadet, however, the drill staff remains the demon of a man, whose omnipresence can leave no one at peace. Nothing can be kept concealed from his eyes, and never will he be satisfied, no matter how much the poor cadet strives. The gentlemen cadets are returning after a long and laborious exercise. Broken to bones, they long for reaching the academy for a comfortable sleep. Alas, the dreams would shatter, as on the gates of the academy, the boys are received by the meaningful smiles of the drill staff. But then, skin deep to this apathy lies a heart that loves his gentleman cadets like his own children. His only aim remains inculcating the best in his cadets, and for that, he's always ready to go an extra mile. The love-hate relationship often erupts the moment a drill staff finds the cadets in trouble, pain, or anguish. As the final passing out parade draws near, no gesture of Staff Rabnavaz reveals his pain to part from his cadets or his pride to see his students successfully passing out. He's stern as ever, vigilant as usual, and demanding perfection as always. Two years with him, however, have enabled the gentleman cadets to see through the rock of his personality and discover the golden heart that lies beneath. Soon the gentlemen cadets will be leaving the academy, but more than the sights and sounds of its lush fields, they will be carrying with them the legacy of their drill staff. He's no more a stranger now, but a perfect guide who'll continue to lead them ever. They now mirror the unrighteousness of their drill staff's personality and the values that they gained surely came from this seemingly humble soul. The gentlemen cadets may go as high as possible, but deep beneath the edifices of their respective personalities, their drill staff will live ever after.